Thanks for coming back. This is Dr. Glenn, your security WordPress fanatic. I'm here to talk to you about plugins. How do we know if a plugin is safe or not? This is a question that I just got from a client that I helped a couple of days ago. It's a fair question. Um, I'm making this video to help the client, but I'm also going to uh, just put it on uh, YouTube so everybody else can benefit too, I hope. I hope there's something in here that's beneficial. Let me just jump right into it. I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I see. Here we are on our test site, and what you're going to do is sneak over to the plugins and click on installed plugins. Let's see what you have already. Okay, there's a bunch of plugins here, and one thing that you're going to notice is that every plugin has a description. And in the description, there's a text link that says view the details. Now I'm going to, we're going to view the details so we can go to the WordPress repository and we can find some information about the plugin. But let me just say first and foremost, if the plugin that you're using doesn't have a listing at the WordPress repository following these instructions, you need to get rid of that plugin today. Um, I've certainly heard it. People say, Dr. Glenn, I paid for that plugin. It is a premium plugin. I bought it from the website of the developer. They don't have it on the WordPress. I don't care. I'm giving you my very best advice as a security professional for over 25 years. The plugins that are at that repository are open to public scrutiny. You're going to get real information. That's where you can find things that you can trust. So let's let's just go in here and click on uh, view details on one of these. You can see this information here looks nice. This is actually pulled from the re repository. I don't like working in this little screen that pops up inside of the WordPress when you do this. So what I do is uh, you're going to see WordPress.org plugin page. Click on that, and it'll bring up the wider page so you can see this, okay? Uh, what we're looking for are these bullets right here at first. When was it last updated? Now, I know a lot of security videos on YouTube say if it's 18 months old, if it hasn't been updated in 18 months, you need to get rid of it. Uh, I don't believe that. I think a year. If WordPress changes fast, any developer that's maintaining their product is going to update it more than once a year. I mean, WordPress comes out with updates all the time. If it's a year old, um, let me just say, if it's more than a year old, my advice is don't use it. Actually, I feel more strongly than that. Let's, if you go, if you're a website owner and you've hired a web developer and a, you have a bunch of plugins in your site and you're doing this now because maybe you got hacked or something and you're, you're double checking. If you start viewing the details and you find that the web developer that you hired uh, has a, is using a bunch of plugins that are more than a year out of date as far as being updated, you need to fire the developer. Imagine that you own a business, you own a store, and you hire an employee to take care of your store, and every night when the employee goes home, without fail, every night, they have an opportunity to lock the door, but they don't. Every single night, they leave the door of your business unlocked, and they go home. Eventually, somebody's going to come up in the middle of the night, check the door, and they're going to find out that it's open. And that individual might just be rotten. They might go in uh, and deface the place and destroy everything, um, steal your customer information, and, and, and worse. So you'd fire that employee, right? You would. I would too. If you hired a web developer and they're, they're not keeping uh, you safe because they're using old plugins that haven't been updated in over a year, I, I suggest that you fire that person. If it's you, you can't fire yourself, just stop it. <laughs> okay, uh, before, uh, beyond this, before the last updated uh, issue, or beyond that, that one metric, active installations. How many people are using that particular plugin? You want plugins that a lot of people use. Uh, you want something that's that works with your version of PHP. All this should make sense. If it says it was updated four days ago, but it's only been tested up to you know 5.1 or something, that should be a red flag. Uh, you want professional developers that keep everything going, and then you're going to go down to the ratings. 
Okay, if this looks if all this looks good, you're going to go to the ratings and you're going to take a look. Now, this overview means nothing. You want to click this see all button right here, that that link. And you want to go to the greater page because I'm I'm going to tell you uh why it means nothing. If you go to a plugin that was popular at one point in the past, okay? In the past it got 3,000 five-star reviews. And lately it's been hacked. Uh if 200 people take the time and they won't but let's just say you know 200 people took the time to come here and post a one-star review and warn other people that this particular plugin's been hacked uh you would still see an, a good review rating because this is an average so there'd be you know 3,000 five-star ratings and 200 one-star ratings this number up here would still be really high and you would think, oh, it must be a good plugin. So don't do that. Get in here, look at the reviews, and you can see what people say lately. What are people saying today about this plugin? Is it working? Is it good? Um, if a, if it's been hacked, you're gonna oftentimes find a bunch of one star reviews and warnings. Don't don't do it. Uh, and another good place to look. You can skip some of this, but I always like to look at the unresolved topics area here. People come in, they ask questions of the developer, and the de if the developer isn't at answering the questions, and this is all dead in here, that's an indicator that the developer doesn't take care of the customers, and that's you. Uh, I'm going to offer one caveat about this, though, okay? Um, sometimes the, the developer will take this sort of tactic where they say if you're using the free version we give you support but if you're you if you want support you have to use the paid version i think there's a problem with that i think it's predatory but i understand everybody's got to make a living and time is valuable and the like so uh you have to decide for yourself what you think is right but you know as a security fanatic somebody that wears a uh, paranoid hat for a living i think uh, if if they say that you have to pay for the premium version to get support what's to stop them from making the free version a little clunky so that you have to have support and it'll drive people there once they've started using the plugin and they're invested in it so uh yeah okay that's that's me i suppose uh maybe i'm the exception and maybe you think just like I do I don't know in any event uh, I don't want to belabor this too much so these are the basic sort of metrics that you can use so that you know uh, you're looking for developers that are actively have have an active uh, group a little community they're taking care of their customers uh, a lot of people are using them it's been updated recently it works with your version of of WordPress and this stuff and then ask yourself the other question is do you really need it do you really need that plugin uh, you know i understand that everybody you know if you're an owner that does your own website and you have customers coming in and they're buying your services i understand the temptation not to update anything it's working right but you have to it's part of it okay it is part of being a business owner you have to take care of your customers. You know, when somebody hires me to come in and help them after they've been hacked, I think that I'm on the team now. Okay, I'm invested. I'm personally offended that the guy that hired me got hacked. Okay, I hate hackers and I, I'm fired up. I have a fire in my belly and I want to fix it. I want to do more than I promised. I want to take good care of my customers. Well, when you own a website, you're the same, you're in the same boat. You, you, you know, business isn't about what you can get from your customer. Business is about a relationship where you at you, you offer some value to customers and they pay you. So they're benefiting and you're benefiting. It doesn't just go one way and you can't offer any value. If it's not a safe place, the, the first thing that you need to do is keep your customers safe. Just like if you own a store or something, you have to keep people safe. That means protecting their data. And that means having good security practices. Don't use outdated plugins. Don't use plugins that aren't uh, updated regularly. Um, don't use suspicious plugins. And when you, when you get hacked, 
get somebody that really can help. And on that point, if you have been hacked and you need help, uh, look in the description. I'll leave some information. If you want help from me, uh, otherwise, uh, try to find a, a real pro. Don't use a robot. Don't use a, a freelancer that charges $5. Take good care of your customers, okay? Uh, treat them like they matter, and they'll take good care of you. So I guess I, uh, I'll get off of that. Uh, I hope this helps some of you guys. Go out and check your, your WordPress plugins now so you know. And now it's on you. Somebody told you, so you can't, there's no excuses. You go make sure everything's battened down nice and tight and everything's trusted. And if it takes a little more effort to redesign your site because you have to abandon an old plug and do it, that is what it's being in business is about. I'll be back with more security tips soon. Thank you for checking in. This is Dr. Glenn. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other.